Good evening. Good evening. First of all, I don't like Mike. Okay. Put it down. I don't need Mike. Right. Okay. I thank you so very much for taking time out to share with us this evening to hear this message. It's a message that has been lingering around for some time. I thank Mr. Trevor Ford for inviting me to New York. I didn't want to come because I do not like the cold. <laughs> if it drops below 50 degrees, that's it. I went to Zimbabwe, and it was cold. I left. I want to thank you for being so patient and being so understanding and having the courage to come and hear me because I'm the one man that most people shouldn't listen to. <laughs> Why? I didn't go to school. I don't read books. I have never read a book in my life, and I never will read any. I disliked school. Yes, I did. But my grandmother that raised me was a very understanding woman. You see, many people just know as to how is it that this one man, Dr. Sebi, your brother, is curing AIDS? Well, if I had read books and I had gone to school, I would not have been able to cure AIDS. Because those that went to school, which are the physicians, do they cure AIDS? No. Do they cure diabetes? No. Did they go to school? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Maya built empires. Did they go to school? No. So why is it that we always seem to put school in front? Mm. Why is it that we always seem to think that we need to read books to enhance our journey? Mm. Well, I didn't. Because I knew that in the context of the book, within those pages, there was an English language that's not yours or mine. Mm. <laughs> so therefore, we are going to travel on a journey that's going to be black, going to be African. Why? Because we are African. I'm not a Chinaman. I'm not a Russian. I'm not a Caucasian. So now, if I tell a gorilla to speak polar bear language and get on in life, he would have difficulties. So all these years, we have been looking for answers. I just turned around and saw Dr. Ben Jokinen. I know Dr. Ben Jokinen. A very enlightened brother. But he comes with philosophy. <coughs> I have no philosophy. I don't need a philosophy. I need to see. Philosophy does not help us to journey through life. What has philosophy done to uplift the black race? Nothing. But in 1960, in a barbershop in New Orleans, I made a statement that I would do something to enhance the life of the black woman. I didn't say black man. I said black woman. Because we came out of a black woman. And we have a tendency and the propensity to always belittle her. We condescend in reference to a black woman. Her mate and her friends. The world itself, a black woman, she's not as equitable as anybody else. But I said that I would do something for her. Little did I know that I would bring healing. So what do I have that is so different? In the past 450 years in the brothers from Africa, our anthropologists, our historians, our revolutionaries, they never talk about the very important thing that was supposed to be addressed our diet. What I hear is what? I go to Africa. I hear about spirituality. Now what in the devil is that? What is spirituality? How do we use that to propel us to enhance our life? How do you use it? Because I'm not spiritual, but I curate. And I know many people who are spiritual. They don't do anything. So where is the prophet in it? Where did that word come from anyway? Do we know? But when I go to Africa, they take me to Oshogbo. And they show me all these totems. 
that they believe in because we live in a world of belief. No, I don't live in a world of belief. Either I know or I don't know. <laughs> Break it down. So now, in the last 450 years, the Western medicine has been prevailing. What do they say? When you are sick, you have a germ, a virus, or a bacteria, which is the cause of your manifestation of disease. That's what they say. A germ, a virus, or a bacteria. Oh, yeah? Well, if you have identified the cause of disease, how come you're not curing anything? <laughs> I said, no. It's mucus. There's only one disease. Never two. And don't be afraid. I told that to the Supreme Court of New York when I was arrested in 1988. When everybody in Harlem, everybody in Brooklyn, brothers who are supposed to be so adapt, so long that one brother told me he read 3,000 books. I said, well, why do you do all that for? <laughs> Hasn't it helped you? Your belly is still big and your eyes have glasses on it, but you read 3,000 books. I didn't read any. I read my mama. Mm. My mama is the only person I listen to. My mama is the only person that I allow to tell me something that I would listen. Now remember, I'm the boy that didn't go to school. So what do you learn outside of school? I learned that which is natural, that which is complementary, that did not come out of a book. So as I grew up, I grew up with the freedom of a black man because my grandma was in the Marcus Garvey Yes, sir. What do you call it? The uh, nursing brigade? Oh, okay. That's right, the Black Cross. My grandma was in it. She told me something. You don't need nobody, and you don't need anything. And if the day comes that you have no money to buy clothes, you walk naked as God made you with the same pride and dignity. I said, well, now then, I could even go bare feet. Grandma <laughs> said, yes. And there was a time in which I was 13 years of age, that my grandma didn't have any money to buy me any Christmas shoes. You know what Rosita Brown said? That was the neighbor. I still remember them, Rosita Brown, and they was rude. When I came outside on Christmas Day, I had all my feet with coconut oil, aye, 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 aye. and I'm gone in the streets. And they said, ha, 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 Fred don't have any Christmas shoes. I said, ha, 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 Fred don't need any Christmas shoes. <laughs> and do you know, that 40, 50 years later, I saw Rosita Brown on the village I built in Honduras. And it was mango season. I had my pants rolled up. You know how we do it in the West yeah, Indies, right? Yeah, yeah. I had my pants rolled up. And I'm sitting under the mango tree. And here come Rosita Brown. I didn't know her. With my brother, with another girl. My brother said, do you know this woman? No, this is Rosita Brown. I said, oh, I remember you now. You said, ha, 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 Fred don't have any Christmas shoes. <laughs> and now you came 50 years later and found me without any shoes on. <laughs> what difference does it make? It's what you have in your brain. That is what comes. What comes from you, not from somebody's book. And you're going to regurgitate that to me? Then I'm looking at a pirate. <laughs> what comes from you is what works, not what comes out of a book that somebody read to you and you read. You have to be careful. He was quoting Pushkin about occurrences. Tonight is an occurrence that is taking place that was supposed to occur, even though I didn't want to come to New York. But here we are, right? Mm -hmm. This is the reality. Mm -hmm. I was a young man working at the age of 13 for my grandmother. I worked in a dairy farm until I was 14. I went to work in a commissary at 15, 14. I worked until I was 20. I had to leave because I had that freedom to leave. I left, went to New Orleans, became a merchant seaman at 20, 1953. I joined Islam, the Muslim religion. I met Malcolm, I met Elijah, I met many people, very intelligent people. I met some very intelligent Christians too. You see, we have a tendency to pit one against the other. Either because you're Muslim, you're good, 
or you're Christian, you're bad, or vice versa. But I'm looking at black people. <laughs> some Muslims, some, some Christians. Well, how do we get to be that? I don't know. Because when we were home in Africa, we were none of that, isn't it? Right. Yeah, right. Okay. So I traveled the world. I became a steam engineer. I am a steam engineer. Uh, how did I get that without going to school and reading books? Well, you have to ask yourself the question. I was in a job training. I passed all the tests. After I went to Los Angeles in 1963, I decided to work for the county. As an engineer, you have to maintain the pH in the water at 7 or less, 6.9, which is slightly on the acid side. 7 is my nose. That's neutral. Anything above my nose this way, right, is 8, 9, 10, 14. Anything below is 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Anything on below 7 is acid. And anything you put in your mouth that is acid will eat you up. And anything you put in your mouth that is acid, God did not make. Like, for instance, wheat, rice, beans, cows, hogs, chicken. Oh, that stuff is garbage. How I know that? Because at 30, I was impotent. My first wife left me because of impotence. Mm -hmm. Why was I impotent at 30, such a young age? You would say, a young man, 30 years of age, impotent? Don't you be surprised. I just left Guinea. I saw men in Guinea, 19 years of age. Impotent. But then when you look in his hand, he's eating cassava. How did an African happen to wind up with cassava in his mouth? I don't know. When cassava is not even African. Cassava is Portuguese. Like the Dutch made the carrot, the Portuguese made the cassava, the British made the beans. And now we are a slave to all of this. And by the time you get to my age 70, you're wearing glasses. Your sex is bad. Your back, your back is bad. Your sex is bad. How does it be sometimes sex is gone for 10 years? I've had brothers to come to me that the sex has been left 10 years ago. And I'm not saying that the brother is less than me. Because I know more than you. I am you standing here. I'm your brother standing in front of you. Telling you what came out of life, not what came out of Sebi. What came out of Sebi means absolutely nothing to you. It means to me. But what I bring to you is not what came out of Sebi. It's what came out of life itself. When God made things or when creation came, you will never find a gorilla in Alaska, right? No. <laughs> Nor coconuts in Canada. Why? Because it's a cosmic arrangement. This arrangement has been violated. You and I are victims. We've been eating the wrong food because we didn't know what to eat. I asked that to the Supreme Court of New York. I was arrested in New York. Why? Because the leaders of New York, every single last one, abandoned the perspective. How did they do that? Well, after I put my compounds together, I cured some people in L.A. I quit my job. Everybody said I was a fool because quitting a job making over $2,500 a month way in 1980. And I was a bachelor. They say, you're crazy. Why? You go out to Earth. I say, I'm going to cure every disease in the world. You ain't going to cure anything. Shut up. They said, okay. I quit my job and I'm curing the diseases. Now what? I came to you. After I had cured five AIDS patients, 10 diabetics, about 15 sickle cell, about four blind, I decided to go brave on this stuff. I put it in the Amsterdam News, the Village Voice, and the New York Post. AIDS has been cured. When the Attorney General saw that, he sent to tell me to remove the ad. <laughs> back and ask the man, why should I remove the ad? He got very angry and sent me to the consumer's affair to see another white man. His name is Dr. Mr. Fitzgerald. He said, well, are you the author of this ad that claimed that AIDS has been cured? I said, yes. I want you to remove it. 
<laughs> so why should I always hear people telling me to do things and yet not giving me a reason? So I said, sir, why should I remove the ad? He said, because I said so. I said, oh boy, we have a little problem. Small little problem, sir. He said, what is the problem? The problem is that the only person in the universe, and that's including the Virgin Mary, <laughs> could tell me to do something, I would do it. It's not the Virgin Mary nor you. It happened to be my mama. See, when my mama tell me to do something, I'm not going to question her. But if the Virgin Mary or you tell me to do something, I'm going to ask you why. Why do I have to remove the ad? He said, because I said so. I said, well, the ad stayed in the paper. I went to my office. February 9th is a Monday night. I got a call on 8 o'clock, right around this time. I see you haven't removed the ad. I say, I have a sneaky feeling that you're going to tell me where I should remove it. He said, I see you in hell. The next day, I was arrested. Practicing medicine without a license. <laughs> Selling products not approved by the FDA. I'm claiming to cure AIDS and other diseases, which is a fraudulent claim. But let me tell you something. The white man won. Why he won? I won the case. I proved that I cure AIDS, but he won because he knows that you would never believe it. That is where the white man won. And to substantiate my claim, when I won the case, the night that I went to get the verdict, there was no black people there. There was a bunch of white people there. The Park Slope paper came to me. The white man sent that to me. Uh, Dr. Sabi, you mind if I ask a question? I said, no. Uh, where are the black newspapers? Tonight you have set a precedent. Mm. This is the first time in the United States government or the country in which someone stood up against the American Medical Association and went. Mm -hmm. Where are the black newspapers? I said, I don't know. Mm. Where are the black leaders? I don't know. I don't even care. I did it for me, not for the public. I want to show the world what a black man could do. The white man said, well, I'm going to write about it. And he put it in the Park Slope paper. Hmm. Herbalist cure AIDS. Dr. Sebi, natural cure for AIDS and more use food, not drugs. A white man did that. I went to Saigon. I went to Jesse Jackson. I went to Al Sharpton. I went to Maddox. I went to Mason. I went to Ben Jokinen. None of them have. They prefer to see you dead. I'm going to travel across the continent because I said they have abandoned me in America. I went to Africa. I went to Sierra Leone. They looked at me like I was stupid. I went to Ghana. They didn't want to hear it. I went to Zimbabwe. No, I went to Tanzania. The ambassador looked at me and he talked a whole bunch of stuff. He went on to talk about spirituality and the ghosts and the spirits. I said, I want to go home. <laughs> I went to Zimbabwe. I went to see Dr. Parinyatwa. I said, Dr. Parinyatwa. I don't want to be disappointed, but if I am disappointed, I would understand. He said, what do you have? To Zimbabwe, I say, I cure AIDS, I cure diabetes, I cure sickle cell, I cure blindness. Here is the proof. He said, I think about it. I said, fine. I came back to America, never to look back at Africa. This may sound bad to you. Oh, yes, it does sound bad, isn't it, that I'm an African by heritage. And that the one place that I should rescue from the grasp of disease should be Africa. Am I right? Yeah. That is our mother. But when you go to Africa and you talk to an African leader, he look at you like a stupid. How do you think I feel? I went to South Africa to see Mr. Mandela and the rest of them. The other day when I saw Mandela sitting there in this big chair, I thought I saw the biggest fool in the world. <laughs> Why? Because he's lying. 
He's straight out lying. Why do I miss such a blatant statement? Because I know I'm telling the truth. He's lying. Because I went to South Africa. I went to his ministry. And he too rejected. I went to Oprah Winfrey. She rejected. WWRL, they say, don't interview this man. WNIB, they call him and say, don't you interview this man. So where, who do I turn to? My mother told me, because my mother's still alive. She's 90, I'm 70. She's 20 years older than me. She had me when she was 20. She said, son, look, let me tell you something. Shut up. <laughs> you told me five years ago that the black race had been drugged with glucose. And you want them to listen to you. You want black people to listen to you when they ate glucose and continue to do so. What is glucose? Glucose mm. is a chemical mm. that will change your thinking pattern. It intercepts and confounds the hypothalamus in your brain. That's what sugar does. That's what starch does. We see it in Africa. Right in Nigeria, you have Igbos, Hausa, and Yorubas. You think they get along? <laughs> That's just in one country, right? Mm -hmm. We're not going to talk about Susu and Fulani. They like to take each other's throat. Why is that? When we're brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. something must have gone wrong, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What went wrong was that we were unaware that the <laughs> stuff that they gave us to eat was undermining our thinking. We are beautiful people. Mm -hmm. We are loving people. Sure, we are. All of us are. And we're smart. I'm not smarter than you. How could I be smarter than you when I carry the same amount of gene cells in my brain as you carry? I'm not smarter than you. I just have a message because some of you have a message that I don't have. I don't have the message for everything, is it? Do I know everything? The answer is no, but I cure diseases. And we need that now, isn't it? But we need bricklayers. We need clothes makers. We need all these art and craft to enhance life and to protect our own existence. Am I right? right? Thank you very much. So now, what I did was to put together compounds that were of herbs that were not made by men. What are the herbs that were made by men? Just, just start. Aloe vera. Mm. Comfrey. Peppermint. Garlic. Enchinesia, golden seal, St. John Wort, paprika, nutmeg, that's deadly. What? If you think that nutmeg isn't deadly, you go home and boil two of them and drink the water. And you're dead in two minutes. <laughs> nutmeg has arsenic. Nutmeg was made. Nutmeg is unnatural. God did not make nutmeg. Yet, I used to love my eggnog with nutmeg in it. <laughs> but all of us, you think I don't know what you eat? <laughs> I know what you eat, because I ate it too. <laughs> Your boy, what is his name? Mr. Bill Cosby was on last night with Larry, Larry King. You, you know why he's talking the way he's talking? Because there's a young man who Bill Cosby grew up with. His name is Lee Weaver, who is also an actor in Hollywood. Lee hated me. Lee hated me. He hated me with a passion because his wife, that you may have seen on Room 222, she works, she is the manager of my office in L.A., Tatanisha. Tatanisha? came to me because she was a little overweight and she was feeling bad wearing glasses, you know, and her, you know, instability with her menses, you know all that, right? Premenstrual syndrome and all that. She said, could I work part-time? I said, sure. But after she worked part-time, she liked it. She said, you know, the job I had, I was running out and I would like to work for you, Dr. Sabi. I said, well, that's fine. You got the job because she's good. Her husband said, you're stupid. <laughs> you're working for that black man. He's not going to pay you. That nigga can pay you. <laughs> you know how niggas are. He's not going to pay you. 
<laughs> I say, Tata, how much would you like for me to pay you a month? She says, so much. I say, you got it. He still disbelieved his wife. He hated her because she's no longer a movie star. So about three months ago, maybe four months ago, Lee is going to make a movie in Detroit. So the plane stopped in Chicago, and he's supposed to make transfer. But when he's at the airport, he started to bleed profusely. Mm. And the doctors couldn't stop his bleeding from his anus. They rushed him to the hospital. When they get him to the hospital, his bleeding continued. The doctor didn't know what to do. They called Tadanisha. Mm. I said, Tadanisha, take the compounds and go to Chicago. Mm. She flew. One hour after she gave her the compound, the bleeding stopped. Mm. And the doctor said, what did you give him? I gave him Dr. Sabi's iron tonic. <laughs> when Lee came back, there's nobody he loved more than me. He bought him. <laughs> but the reason why Lee took the position of disliking me, it wasn't that he hated me. Black people doesn't hate. We love the very white man that burn us. <laughs> we fight for him. We know we love him too. That's in us. We love. So Lee didn't hate me, but the food that he'd been eating was undermining <laughs> his thinking. And now he bought me an opera cap and he takes me around LA. He said, I'm going to see uh, Bill, you know, and I'm going to mention my name, your name to him. And he did. In fact, he's with Bill right now. I'm going to see Lee Weaver on Monday in Miami, and he's going to tell me what's going to happen between him, me, and Bill. Because Eddie Murphy is trying to help me. He's trying to make a movie of my life because I helped his mother when I was standing. <laughs> what I want to say is this, though, is that what I did was to find out that the one thing that the physician were making, the mistake that they were making, they didn't address genetics. What is genetically consistent with a group, not so with another. <coughs> like I said, gorillas do not eat polar bear food. So how come we eat everybody's food? We eat Chinese food, we eat European food, we eat everybody's food. But when I ask the Supreme Court, when you remove the African from Africa, did you bring his food with him? The judge said no. Well, when the judge said no, that they didn't bring our food with us, what does that open up for us to do? What privilege did we gain right then at that moment? No, when I said, when I asked the question, did you bring our food with us when you remove us from Africa? He said no. Well then, what have you been feeding us? Besides, are we in the position to demand that they give us the food that God made specifically for us? <laughs> yes, it does. But which one of the leaders will do that? Go tell that to Minister Fayakar, the bravest of all. No, he's not going to do that. Go tell Oprah Winfrey, there's a nigga who's running around saying he curates. Put him on your screen. She's not going to do that. Mm -hmm. WWRL kicked me off. So what is happening? Is it that our leaders supposed to, no, not leaders, but supposed to be leaders, are they really helping? No. The black man has always clinged to the laws of life, not philosophy. Philosophy has no place in life. He's like the little girl. I was taken to give a speech here in uh, Cramden Hall, not Cramden Hall, on 138th Convent, which is City College, here in New York. The day that was driving me to do this talk, this speech, there's a little girl and a little boy sitting in the back, who is the children of the man that's driving. Son, near this. He's married to a Puerto Rican woman have these two children. The little girl is behind me, the little boy is sitting behind him. The little boy asked me, Dr. Sebi, uh, what are you going to talk about today? I said, I don't know. She said, we want to talk about the soul, the mind, 
and the spirit. The little girl is 12 years old. She said, no! <laughs> Don't talk about that! I said, why, Taina? Because when you talk, you talk about reality. Soul, mind, and spirit comes out of the imagination. That's not reality. I said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what did you say? A 12 years old little girl said that. So when you ask a grown up, where is your mind? They go like this. <laughs> but when you open that skull, you see no mind, you see a brain. So I ask one day, what is the mind? Everybody go like this. <laughs> but then, there's a contradiction, right? Yeah. They brought me a crazy woman from Mexico. <laughs> insane. Where someone is insane, where is the mind? <laughs> you and I say, she have lost mm. her mind. I say, wow, this mind thing really stretches out. I say, now, if she lost her mind, where did the mind go? <laughs> so when the crazy woman was brought to me by her son, she was completely crazy. I went to her intestines. A week later, she came up the steps of a little pro street in L.A. She said, you think I don't remember you? <laughs> I said, uh, <coughs> I don't know. She said, well, I remember you. You, you were bare feet. No, you have shoes on. Because I'm always bare feet. <laughs> Tonight, because it's cold. <laughs> but she said, you know, I remember you well. You know why I took your remedy? Because my son had taken me to many healers and spiritualists, people who read cards and stuff. Shamans. I don't know what shamans are for, but we have shamans too, wh whatever they're about. But you said, when I was going down the steps, you said, when my son asked you, are you going to help my mother? I said, I'll try. And she said, that was encouraging to me. You didn't say anything more than that, and I appreciated that. I'm no longer crazy after 11 years of insanity. Mm -hmm. What caused insanity? Something was in her colon, sending off a negative message to her brain via the central nervous system. C.C. Charles in Aruba hated his wife. He hated his wife. He hated his wife with a passion. For 16 years, he didn't talk to her. <coughs> Living in the same house. What was wrong with C.C. Charles? When I removed the stuff from his colon, he told me, you see that woman? There's a woman living in the hallway down the way, go tell her a lover. <laughs> How come he saw love? <laughs> because the acid that was in his body was removed. That's all. We are all stressed. We are nervous. We go to sleep at night, we can't sleep. Charles couldn't sleep. So what did the little girl named Achilles Strauss that had sickle cell anemia? I removed this, I remove it by removing stuff from her colon. And guess what happened? That was the biggest thing in DC. I was called because Achilles Strauss, the little girl with sickle cell, was born two years of age. Mr. Dick Gregory said that God gave us sickle cell to fight malaria. Oh, yes, he did, in Cromden Hall, at Howard University. I was there. I heard it. So when people hear these kinds of things, you believe them, right? Because Dick Gregory said it. He's supposed to be an authority, right? By whose standard? I don't know. But he has not cured any disease either. So this white lady brought it up to me. She said, well, you haven't given a killer protein. I said, Dr. Steinberg, this is at the Georgetown Pediatric Hospital. They caught up with me and the parent because we snapped the baby out of the hospital. But by the time they caught up with us, she was killed. Three months later. It only takes three months to kill sickle cell. So they want to condemn me. She goes to, to them a file that I was, my record on a killer, and she noticed, you didn't give a killer protein for three months. I said, Dr. Stanberg, do you want to rest your argument on protein? She said, well, of course, unless the great doctor say we think that protein is a necessary food. I said, ma'am, I know nothing about protein. Trust me, this word protein came from your parents, from your brother, from your gene, from your culture. That word is not an African word. 
So if there's anyone today that could explain this protein bit should be you. <laughs> what is protein, Dr. Stanberg? She said one of the 19 amino acids, the building blocks of life. I said that is the patent quest answer or response. But I want to remind you, Dr. Steinberg, that the human body has no use for acidity. So when you said amino acids, the body has no use for acids. Where do they fit? The human body has 102 minerals. And when one of those minerals are depleted, your body becomes sick. If iron becomes depleted, you are anemic. If calcium becomes depleted, you have rickets of whole bone structure. And if you cannot think, you're lacking of carbon and copper. And so it goes. Protein, where does protein fit? Furthermore, is it electrical? She said, what do you mean? I said, well, my body's electrical. It moves. I'm always moving. I cannot move unless my body's electrical. There could be no motion unless that motion is electrical. So if I'm going to eat protein, protein better be electrical because the body only assimilates a substance through chemical affinity. There is assimilation. Is it electrical, Dr. Steinberg? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I said, Dr. Steinberg, what is sickle cell anemia? Sickle cell was given to black people 10,000 years ago because their blood went through mutation in Africa. I said, oh, God. <laughs> I'm more confused. She said, why? Because the Gregor said God gave us sickle cell to fight malaria. You said it is mutation. But the Gregory coded what your brother teach him. Because the Gregor didn't get that out of an African perspective. That came out of Europe. Because the Gregor is a parrot. And now you're telling me it is mutation. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Dr. Steinberg. It is neither God nor mutation. Sickle cell is the deprivation of iron fluorine because I killed sickle cell. She stomped out of there, very angry. You see, little white girls have a tendency to want to condescend with black men because most black men look up at white women. I look up at my mama. Everybody is down. Not that I disrespect white women or white people or anybody, but you do not condescend with me. Because I know I have a place in this world society. And I have never compromised that place. Because I'm just as equitable as you, anybody else, or any race in the world, and maybe barely more than most. Mm -hmm. So don't even play the game about, I am black, so I have to be inferior. Well, that only works when you have accepted glucose. Like the Pavlovian dog. I ate glucose just like you. My grandmother woke up in the morning, and she gave me baits. You had them. Mm -hmm. Eggs, oatmeal, Ovaltine. Oh my God, all that stuff I'm eating. And I couldn't breathe. And my, I couldn't breathe, but my grandma didn't know that she was killing her grandson. Until one day, it came to me. This stuff is bad. And I went on a diet of a 92 days fast. I didn't eat anything. And now here I am, at 70. I have no glasses on my eyes. I. Not in Putin anymore. I've been making babies. <laughs> I don't have any of the things that normally would be said us at seven, you know, 70 years of age, you got to watch it because your back going to go out. Your eyes been out because they asked me. I went to get my driver license. So they said, read these letters. So I read the letters. Read these letters. I read the letters and the smaller ones. So they said, do you have contact lens on? I said, no, I do not wear contact lens. Do you drive at night? Of course I drive at night. I drive all the way from California here nonstop. I drove from New York to Honduras nonstop. <laughs> night and day. We all could do it. If we stop eating the garbage. I know that when you go home, you're not going to stop tomorrow. Because I didn't either. The only reason why I jumped on the fast right quick was because my penis wasn't getting hot. <laughs> when a young man, you see, when, if you have diabetes, you'll violate. 
or if one eye or one arm are going bad. But when your penis head gets going on, you're going to do everything that's necessary to bring it back. So when the man said, you want your sex back? I said, what you mean to avoid a trap? He said, stop eating. I said, for how long? 90 days. And if you believe that this is a lie, there is somebody in this audience, and I know that to be a fact. There is someone in this audience that is impotent, and they're going to try it. But I will tell you, brother, when you stop eating for 30 days, you will be ready, not 90. Before the 90, you will be very well ready at 30. You will say, you mean to tell me that just stop eating does all of this? Well, of course. Of course. Because what you have done, cleanse your arteries. Mm. You plan, your eyes clear up, mm. your nerves get good again, you don't shake. <laughs> your understanding gets better, like C.C. Charles said he loved his wife. Of course he did, because I had removed his diabetes, I removed his full circulation, I removed his high blood pressure. The boy is relaxed and he realized that he loved his wife. And when she came out the door and said, you said what? I love you. I always love you. And he's crying now because he's paying back for what he did, but he wasn't guilty like you are guilty. Sometimes then you find yourself angry with your wife, and then you say, I wonder why did I take it so far? And sometimes she, on the other hand, makes us a little bit angry, right? But the only reason why she goes through her little moon swings is there again. She's going through menopause. When it gets cold outside, it's hot with her. She want to open the window on you, say, girl, what's wrong with you? It's cold. But she doesn't feel that because her body is out of balance. What brought it out of balance? The mucous membrane has been compromised. Every time we eat the food that God did not make, you will find yourself in trouble. Men like women, anger, stress, so what I did, I perfected the compounds to remove the one disease that manifests in a million different ways. If the mucus is broken in the head, it's insanity, it's paranoia, it's schizophrenia. But if the mucus membrane has been compromised in the bronchial tubes, it's bronchitis. If the mucus is in the nasal passage, it's sinusitis. So it goes. Removing the mucus, you remove all disease. It is as simple as that. Dr. Sabe is not a scientist. He's not a doctor. He's a plumber. Mm. <laughs> 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 That's all I do. Clean out the pipes. And there come life again. There's a young man in this city named Doc Well. Errol Doc Well. Anybody here know Errol? He makes he make these, you know, the uh, posters. He's an artist. Errol came to me, he's from St. Vincent. Errol came and he said, I die. Errol couldn't breathe. Errol could not breathe. Errol was dying, his pressure was high, his eyes were bulging. Three months later, Errol didn't need anything for three months. Errol didn't need anything for six months. Errol's wife called me and said, if you don't start giving that man what you're giving him, I'll kill him. <laughs> I'm going to kill him. She was complaining about his impotence. Now she's complaining he's having sex with everybody in the neighborhood. <laughs> Errol made one mistake, though. After six months of not eating, Errol went to St. Vincent, and when he got to St. Vincent, the one person in your life that could always poison you mm. and you have no defense against her happens to be your mama. Mm. So when Errol went home to St. Vincent and his mother oh. was cooking the chicken and dumplings, oh. <laughs> and this rice and peas, and this fried plantain, Errol passed the kitchen. He swore up and down he would never submit to it. 
But as he passed, <laughs> and that stuff went by his nose, he stopped. He said, oh my God, am I going to submit to this thing just once? And he put the stuff in his mouth and he hit the bed. Four hours later, for six months. You don't cheat life. After he cleansed his intestines and you put that stuff in there, he's going to react violently. So I tell you now, you and I are part of a perspective that yes, we cure AIDS. If I was a Russian in Russia curing AIDS, you would say the Russian people are curing AIDS. If I was a Chinaman in China curing AIDS, you would say the Chinese people are curing AIDS. But I'm your brother standing in front of you. You don't say we cure AIDS. You say he cure AIDS. Single me out. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not what's happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we got proof. We do, these, we do these things. So now I'm telling you tonight that we need not suffer with disease anymore. Africa? I feel sorry for Africa. Because I found out that there isn't one African country. I'm going to repeat. And you can take this abroad and say, Dr. Savi said this, because I'm going to repeat it. There isn't one African country that is interested in the cure for AIDS. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add, there isn't one black American leader that is interested in the cure for AIDS. Name him, I want to hear him. In 1988, something happened in this country among the elite leaders and the religious leaders. Some Japanese came to America and they got a compound known as AZT. And the other one is interferon. And they coupled them together. And what did they make with that? Come on. No, come on. Interferon and AZT is the compound that produces Kimron. They told you and I that Kimron was from Kenya. No, that's not the truth. Whoever said that was telling a lie. Because I was interviewed by Kojonami in D.C. And they sent a young man from Kenya to defend Kimron. And I didn't know all of this bad thing with Kimron. I didn't know the history of Kimron until Kojo brought it out. Kimron is not even African. It was compounded in Japan with chemicals made in the United States, taken to Africa, and told you it was African. And we believed it. But did they support it? The Christian church supported it. The Muslim church supported it. But we who have proof that we create, did they support that? Yeah. Well, aren't we in a better position than they are? Aren't we in the position to ask them how come he didn't support Dr. Sebi? And he come with the medicine of our fathers. What are they going to say? What is Oprah Winfrey going to say when she's told that there's a man curing AIDS and could show her proof? What is she going to say? But she interviewed homosexuals. <laughs> she interviewed thieves. She interviewed a whole bunch of folks. But she would never interview Dr. Sebi that cure AIDS. That means absolutely nothing. Yet, AIDS is a disease of the century. And if there's a cure, you would think that that would be embraced. Am I right? right. Well, why not? So if you and I come together, it doesn't matter if the leaders doesn't support it, right? Because the leader of a people has never been a male. Have you ever seen in the forest cubs following males? No. <laughs> Who does the cub follow? <laughs> well, well, how come we have male leaders? <laughs> when you were small, you never follow your dad. You follow your mom 24-7. And my son, who saw me cure people of diseases, when he bruised his finger, Mom! He said, isn't there something? The boy has to, he has to call on Mom. 
And I'm standing there. His mom is way in the kitchen. But he had to, because that's us. We are mama's boy. I'm 70 years old, but I'm still a mama's boy. Whose boy am I going to be but my mom? That's what you mean. Came out of a black woman. Of course I'm her boy. Forever, as long as she lives. So now it shows that we've been bamboozled, as Malcolm said, but we didn't see the extent of it, that we have not yet fathomed how much damage has been done to the hypothalamus with glucose. Who has done that research? No religious leaders, no political leaders, no community leaders. They haven't done that. So you and I continue to run into the stone wall and not understanding why. Haitians, hey you Haitian, just talk about some Jamaican. Don't talk about no Jamaican to me. Hey you Jamaican, just talk about some Haitian. Look, tell me, look, wait just a minute. <laughs> I'm no Haitian, okay? But when I look at both faces, they look alike. <laughs> As a confound me, my grandparents are from Jamaica and from Kualebuke, La Plaine, Haiti. <laughs> so I got Haitian in me. And I got your bacon in me. What is the war in me? No, there's harmony in me. Because I know that both are brothers. But the acid that we've been eating, the glucose, is undermining our thinking. It's making us so stressed that there's problem with Jamaicans and Trinidadians and Haitians and Africans, like I said, right in Nigeria, there's problems. And it has not been addressed properly. Enough is enough. The fact of the matter is, we have been fed the wrong food, as Messenger Elijah Muhammad said. We are not supposed to eat meat. Stop it. It's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you. It will hurt you. Because I know I've been through that. And there's a reason why I was so sick. I used to wonder, why if God loved me so much, why am I so sick? <laughs> Asthma, diabetes, impotence, and the rest. When I had to be that sick, to come out of it, to be able to talk about it. Mm. If I had not traveled the journey, how would I be able to take you on the journey? I had to travel through it. It's no mystery. It's not spiritual. No, none of that. It is natural. We took us away from because when we were living in Africa, before the white man came, we didn't have such words as spirituality in our vocabulary. It wasn't needed. We didn't have any religion because that wasn't needed. We were living in accordance with life and God because that's all we know. Just like the animals of today. The gorilla doesn't violate any law. No. You violate, we violate laws, not the gorilla. We live by the laws of life. Now, for us to go back to that law, it's a little bit tedious, but we have an herb. Let me make you all aware of something. I just came back from Zimbabwe, right? But I made some trips to Swaziland, and Swaziland is a country that grows something that would change your thinking in four hours. Where you used to be 400 years ago, you will go back in a matter of four hours. Miracle. It's not a miracle, but it acts like a miracle. <laughs> your brother's right. It's an herb that when you take it, it takes you back to your childhood. And you begin to see yourself and your activity and all those things that you experience in life. But sometimes we get to the age of 40 and we say things like this. You know, I had some bad experiences. You had what? You had bad experience, but how come you're alive? <laughs> Everything that you experienced was supposed to be experienced by you. If you were not supposed to experience what you experienced, how come you experience it? <laughs> how come it happened? It was supposed to happen. But these herbs, upon eating them, they will take you back home. And when you come out of it, I had a, little, a lady who was uh, bipolar. Her mother said, in Miami, my daughter is very sick. She threw things around. She cannot keep a job. She cannot sleep. Crazy people cannot sleep because it takes oxygen <coughs> for someone to sleep. 
This is why we made the intracellular chelation to remove the acid from the brain, from the pancreas, from the liver, from the colon, making you new again. When oxygen fails to reach the brain, you cannot sleep. Sometimes I know people that were insane for 10 years, and for 10 years mm -hmm. they did not close their eyes. But as soon as you give them a company <coughs> that is compatible, that is complementary, that is godly, they begin to sleep and they love you. As simple as that. We are going to clean the body out to see the thing that we need to see. You will never get them out of a book. Because if they were in a book, then I wouldn't be standing here, right? That's right. Yeah. And when I was arrested in 1987, Dr. Victor Herbert, who is head of the Veteran Administration right here in New York, they called him, hey, we got a nigga here, we're talking some stuff, we want you to counteract that, because we know you bad. They brought him, they brought Dr. Bonanno from Memorial Hospital in Boston, we want you. They went all the way to Minnesota and got Dr. Christopher Hub, three doctors in the Supreme Court against me. And when they read their accomplishment and their degrees and their school, it took a half an hour for each one. And when they read mine, they said, well, Dr. Slip is an urban. <laughs> that was it. But when the argument started, I asked the questions that the doctors were not prepared to ask, to answer. Like for instance, I said, Your Honor, is it a fact that the Bible states that the herbs are for the healing of the nation? In the book of Genesis, in the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Revelation, in the book of Exodus? The judge said, yes. I said, well, if the Bible states that the herbs are for the healing of the nation, then <coughs> isn't that coming from God? The judge said, yes. Well, why am I being arrested? I use herbs. <laughs> the physician use chemicals. They are not being arrested. <laughs> so, am I the violator? But, Your Honor, if by chance we disregard God and say, go to hell, uh-oh, then we have Hippocrates. 365 years before Christ was born, he was curing every disease known to man. Hippocrates was curing long before Christ was even born. What did he use? Herbs. I said, but if we disregard God and Hippocrates, we go to Jesus. Didn't Jesus ask, why is the daughter of Jerusalem sick? Is there no balm in Gilead? The balm of Gilead is one of the best herbs in the world. That's the herb I use. If we disregard Jesus, then we go to Claudio Galeno, 1729, Renaissance Italy. This Italian was the last of the natural scientists. He cured the Prince de Medici children of all the diseases that they had using herbs. So, Your Honor, we have God, Hippocrates, Jesus Christ, and Galeno. Now we go to science. Science shows that the only substance that could readily assimilate and render good is a substance that has carbon base. Chemicals has no carbon base, neither does artificial plants. So I rest my case. And the judge looked at the physician and said, and asked, do I get a response? The physician had the, the, the pencil and was going. <laughs> that pissed the judge off a little bit. She said, if I do not get a response in two minutes, this man will talk the remaining day without any interruption. Well, what kind of response were they going to give? No, I covered all aspects of it, right? <laughs> but this is what we should, we didn't know these things. None of us knew these things. That we were supposed to stand up in our favor. Well, we didn't. I came and did. And I'm hated for it. Yes, I am. Believe me, you'd be surprised what is being said about me as we speak by those who call themselves leaders and nutritionists. Right here in New York, a 
a group of women, these women always get me in trouble, they said, Dr. Sebi, uh, you all remember this, and I know you all remember this, 1989, there was a meeting held on uh, that hall, the big building in Harlem, what they call it, the State Harlem Building. Right, State Office Building. Yeah. The what? State Office State Building. State Office Building. In that building, in 1989, there is to be a great big meeting. African-American War on AIDS. Did you all remember that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so the sister said, Dr. Sebi, you're going to go there. I said, why? You're going to talk. I said, you're crazy. <laughs> I'm Sebi. I'm the man that has no help. I'm the man that has no one, any group to support me. Because I'm not a church member, I'm not a large member, I'm not anything. So I have no one to help me. You're going to send me there to be chopped up? Where are you going? So I went and act mischievous. When I got there, a bunch of white folks, which is good. But I saw Barbara Justice. I saw Dr. Prince. I saw Dr. Love. And I saw, I said, oh my God, all enemies. <laughs> Let me see how I'm going to weave my way in there. So when I got in the meeting, a man was talking. So I'm going to seize the opportunity. This man is talking how we should make the AIDS patient feel good until they die. <laughs> when the man is about to sit down, I jumped up. I said, the man is right. The man is 100% right. Right there, I called everyone to look at me. <laughs> I said, but... We could do better than that. We cure AIDS. We cure AIDS and we just prove it to the Supreme Court. Guess what Dr. Barbara Justice said? Well, we have a man coming from D.C. to give us the message on AIDS. I said, well, who's that man? Dr. Ali Mohammed. I said, no stuff. What is he going to tell us? Well, he going to tell us that AIDS kill black people. I said, we didn't know that. We were totally oblivious to that. We need Alin to come from D.C. to tell us that AIDS killed black people. <laughs> this has been going on. They've been controlling us. I'm saying to you, we don't need any leaders. We need ourselves. And once we come together, we don't need the leaders. Let them die. Because look, let me tell you something. One of the biggest black leaders in America had prostate cancer. Well, there's a man right in this city that worked with this man, Joseph Ben Jokinen. His name is Professor Simmons, George Simmons. Right. right. Then he had prostate cancer. Mm. Yeah. Who killed him? You. Dr. Well, why didn't this big religious leader in Chicago come to me? His balls were too big. <laughs> you see, when you climb up high above people, and from down here, somebody said, hey, man, I could help you. When he looked down, he gonna think about it. He don't want to go down there no more. I'm the little man. He is the big man. But because you assume that position of superiority, his balls were cut out. Don't let that happen to you, brothers and sisters. We are the little people. And I'm proud to be the little people. Because as the little people, I recognize that we all are the same. In the same boat. We are the same. I'm not better than you. But the minute that I take the position I'm better than you, I'm in trouble. You don't want to do that anymore. Our leaders have betrayed us. Every one of them have betrayed us. I could say it openly because I have proof. Nobody could have told me something else because I've been here in this business for 32 years and for the last 15 years I've been curing AIDS and they knew about it. Why haven't they done something about it? Isn't that proof enough for you? Yes, it is. Now, I'm saying with this, with this man's help, we could form a family because the one thing we were thinking and have is that family orientation that love for each other, that was removed from America. This is why I don't blame the leaders either. Because their experience is not ours. It's a difference. It's a big difference. Not that we are better than our brothers in America. No, we're not. But they experience something different. 
And in that difference, a lot of ugly things is taking place now. Because there's no reason why they should negate me and I'm curing diseases. Could we ask one of them what is the reason? I would like to hear that. But let me give you all something like a barometer. I was in Atlanta, Georgia. There's a big church in Atlanta, Georgia, Stone Mountain. It's a round church. Big, huge, thousands of people. Boy, these people could get audiences of thousands of people. Big church. So a woman came from the church. She had breast cancer. She was killed. And now one came, she had diabetes. She was killed. And now one came, had ulcers. She was killed. Guess what they did? They made the biggest mistake. They go and tell the Reverend Mother. Reverend Mother, there's a man kind of crazy, his name is Sebi, but he cured us of these diseases. So we want him to speak at the church. What is his name? Dr. Sebi. But at that time, I didn't have pictures of me on any of my pamphlets. It was only Dr. Sebi. Well, when a black person in America see the word Sebi, they are so chilled up with Malaysia, India, Pakistan, <laughs> not with a nigger. <laughs> so, I said, she said, what? She said, for you to come to church on Sunday. And that she's going to let you uh, say a few words, and she's going to let you talk the following Sunday. I say, uh, what's her name? Gail. Gail Kaufman, Atlanta, Georgia, Channel 13, right now. She worked for Channel 13. She said to me, why are you so pessimistic? I said, look, <laughs> look, girl, let me tell you something. I'm not an optimist, nor a pessimist. I'm a realist. Because optimism disappoints you sometimes, and so is pessimism. No, I'm a realist. She's not going to let me talk, just like the big man in Chicago. She said, what I see about that? Sunday came. I go to church with Gail, and I'm sitting in the audience, and she's preaching. She said, I have papers in front of me. There's a very important <laughs> and distinguished man in the audience that will give us a few words next week, but he's in our audience, and I would like for him to come forth, stand up, and come and give a few words. Brothers and sisters, when I stood up and the black woman looked at me, I could look at Satan dead in her eyes and say, yeah, I got you, I got you, I got you. I said, I got this one, this one is mine. When I went up, I said, good morning, I said, good morning. And tell the audience a few words and then next time you'll come back, and I did. When I walk out the church, Gail said, you see, pessimist. I said, OK, now was the Sunday, right? right? I didn't go back to LA. I went to Miami to be close. Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Guess what I did on Friday night? I called Gail. Mm -hmm. I said, Gail, I'm calling you not to ask you when I'm going to speak or what hour. I'm calling you to ask you, what is the excuse that Reverend Mother gave you to prevent me from speaking in the church? Guess what Gail said. <laughs> My feet were too dirty. <laughs> That's what Reverend Mother said. My feet was too dirty. Do you know? That if I was the reverend and someone come with a message of healing and their feet was dirty, mm. what? What did you say, brother? <laughs> brother, I would get the biggest golden to church. My grandmother, being from Jamaica and belonging to the Episcopal Church of England, which is the, the Anglican Church, where you're going to go to church. I'll say, well, I'm going to fix her. <laughs> Fred, hi, Fred. That's what they call me. Hi, little Fred. Everybody loved me, and I loved them too. But they don't know what's going on in my brain, right? <laughs> so this man put this robe on me, 
and put this thing in front of my in, in my hand to collect Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. I'm collecting all this money. I said, now why are they putting all this money in this tray? Is this that they buy their way into heaven with the money? Uh, I mean, they have no respect for God. I mean, we are disrespectful. You're going to pay God some money to go to heaven. Now, then, this go. Now, what, what, what do you think God will tell you? Did, didn't they say, well, to see that which is Caesar? Was it God made money? The answer is no. So how could you buy yourself in heaven with some of it? So when I'm collecting the money, I've got this great big idea. Put that money in your pocket. <laughs> so when I got in the back of the room with the money, I started doing this. <laughs> and the preacher is a white man from South Africa named Pooley. <laughs> he happens to come in the room and say, what do you think you're doing? Well, let me tell you something. Nobody intimidates me. Not even God or the devil. Mm. Nobody intimidates me. I said, what did you say? What, what do you think I'm doing? I am relieving you of one more sin. And I walk out of the church with the money. Well, instead of God chastising me, why did God chose me to be a healer? Because God knew I did the right thing. Take that money. That was the little boy then. That's the little boy now. I have no respect for what? unjust mm. that is not just because there are some little people in the in the community who would like to go to church but they don't have any money mm. and it's, it's embarrassing mm. well uh miss marie Sindro, you have a gold star you gave five hundred dollars last year <laughs> or last month miss <laughs> jones Lilburn, she gets a silver star. She only gave a hundred. Miss mm. Mary McCullough, you gave fifty cents. You gave <laughs> you. Black star. So they have all these stages right. for you to make you feel good. No. What makes people feel good is they help. Mm. Once you arrive at that place where it is comfortable, you're gonna love everybody but first yourself. But our religion, all of them are guilty. Every religion in the world is guilty of feeding us garbage. They don't care about us. They poison us. The Christian church, they eat, eat some pork. <laughs> no, you know, the chicken is, well, the chicken is worse, but the pork is bad too, because it's warm. But the Muslim church said, eat some lamb. That's the is an that's anthrax. You eat anthrax. When you eat lamb, it's worse ten times than pork. Worse than pork. Then the Buddha, oh, the Buddha has it down for you. The Buddha did ghee, clarified butter. So who go, who would go? Who's in our favor? So brothers and sisters, yes. Dr. Sebi doesn't feel too comfortable tonight knowing that he cured AIDS and knowing that his brothers who are in the position of leadership just deliberately disregard the entity. Not me, I'm happy. But I don't feel too comfortable. Why? Because I want to see us heal. And some of us feel that if the healing doesn't come through a leader, that it's no good. No, 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 no. When have you ever heard of any leader in America? that led us to a comfortable place anyway. Mm -hmm. The only man was doing it, and he's no longer with us, is Elijah Muhammad. Mm -hmm. He had farms, he was gonna pursue, mm -hmm. he was doing that. He also had school, and he's gonna build a hospital. Oh boy, I was happy, because mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm gonna perform. But when the man passed, and well, that was over with, I was sent to Dominica, called to Dominica by Mr. Oliver Serafin, who from Dominica here, well, Dominica had a man named Oliver Seraphim, like me, a revolutionary. He talked like this man here, like Trevor Ford. Strong! Very up front! He said, Sebi, you cure my aunt of cirrhosis of the liver, you come on to Dominica. And I went to Dominica. And he's gonna build me a hospital up on the hill in Wabe. And what happened? He lost the election. Mm. Eugenia Charles won. Mm. And Eugenia Charles came one day with her entourage and said, 
Tata. <laughs> Your friend lost. So you have to leave. I said, but Miss Charles, I came to Dominica to heal people. I said, Mr. Jack Grano. Yes, Mr. Jack Grano lives in Goodwill, no, no longer blind. I said, the young lady in New Town no longer have diabetes. I don't care. I only support orthodox medicine, she said. I said, you what? I only support orthodox medicine. I said, now then, your argument rests on orthodoxy. She said, yes, of course. I said, but orthodoxy means following the established premise, not violating it. You say that you support orthodox medicine, is hypocrisy the power of medicine? She said, yes. Did he use herbs or chemicals? When she saw the drift, she got the drift of she's gonna leave anyway. <laughs> now, you're gonna leave anyway. I said, thank you. So she kicked me out. I went to St. Croix. They to take feces in bags and throw it at my place in St. Croix. The people in St. Croix told me I was a liar. There was only one person in St. Croix that saw me stressed. I was about to cry. Of course I was. I felt, I, I, I felt useless. Among my brothers, that look at me as a though I'm a liar. How do you think I felt? I just quit my job two years ago. And now I find myself in this land and people don't believe what I have to say. So this one woman named Cleophus Bennett from St. Croix <coughs> came out of a store that afternoon and said, young man, come here. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I heard what they're doing to you. Don't give up. That was a bit of encouragement. But then my wife said, we're going to Puerto Rico. <coughs> well, I speak Spanish fluently because we're born in Honduras. So I thought that it was going to be good there. I went to Puerto Rico. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Puerto Rico is the only place in the world where I did not see a black woman married to a black man. <laughs> Not one black Puerto Rican woman is married to a black man. I said, boy, it is a crime to be black. Mm -hmm. They interviewed me on Montiante. They interviewed me on Natu Salu. Not one Puerto Rican came. But I was doing my business with you in Washington and in New York, and I live in Puerto Rico. So it's been an uphill, isn't it? Only because we cure. Your biggest enemy is not the white man. Because the white man came and wrote about me. And the Supreme Court of New York exonerated me, right? But how come the black leader doesn't do it? How come Oprah doesn't do it? Do you know what we should do? I tell you what we should do. Just form a, co a committee and write these leaders a letter from your community, because you have that right. They place themselves as leaders, right? Yes, well, could they be questioned? Yes. Should they be questioned? Yes. Well, let us do it together. Yes. Let's write them a letter. Yes. We're going to form a family, because we need to heal each other. And I'm going to see that we are healed. Because mm -hmm. in this box, where, where, where it is? Mm -hmm. <coughs> we have a product. I said, to my friend Timothy. Timothy, he's a barber. We should go to a barber shop. In a barber shop, you hear all kind of conversation, but it's never one that is truthful and good. It's about <laughs> rich people, boxers, all the greatest boxers. My son told me, you're in the wrong business. I said, why? Because you heal people. You need to break ribs to get millions, <laughs> like Muhammad Ali. He busts people ribs and he's famous. The other one, the, the brother, Tyson, he busts your ribs too. He gets millions. And hey, you come, killing ribs. And they don't even recognize you. So what I said, I told Timothy, Timothy, I'm going to make a product that is going to heal black folk. And I'm not 
going to charge what they charge me. When I went to my healer, he charged me $2,000, 1963. Cuernavaca, Mexico. Alfredo Cortez said, I guarantee that you will no longer have diabetes. And that's 40 years ago, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Who cured diabetes today? There aren't any institute in the world that cured diabetes. He cured me 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And now I'm curing diabetes. And nobody hear about that either. I told Timothy, I'm going to make a product that's going to sell for no more than $80. And it's going to cure everything that you could possibly think of. I brought it down to this for only $50. This is the Viento. This is a product that I tried it first with my mama. <laughs> I want to hear what she had to say because my mom is always criticizing me. She said, well, finally, you did something that really worked. She said, it worked. Pain, bowel, energy, sex. I is right here. This is my latest compound. I have condensed all of my product to one. The Viento. I take it every day. In fact, I took some yesterday because I knew it was coming. I didn't sleep last night. I haven't slept all day. This man had me up all day and I only took two of these. And I still have energy. This is not a vitamin. Vitamin has no place in human life because vitamins <coughs> are dead. They are non-electrical. This is electrical. This is considered by the Supreme Court as natural vegetation cell food. Natural vegetation cell food is electrical. Everything that God makes is electrical. Anything man made, not so. So I am promoting my latest product my latest product and uh no ain't no recall here <laughs> i know that tonight you've heard many things diametrically opposing that which you have accepted or believe or heard but i'm going to give you the opportunity at this time to ask questions do I get any questions? <clears throat> oh boy, over here. Oh, what about the other product that you were talking about that takes you back to your childhood? That product is the Stoparia cubensis. That is a product that the people in Africa ate. And this is why the people in Swaziland was never conquered because they could see what the British was going to do before they even did it. Right. You're going to start selling that? Sir, I have it now. <laughs> but you will have to stand for that. What's it called? Stropharia cubensis. S-T-R-O P-H A-R-I-A Stropharia cubensis C-U-B-E-N S-I-S Yes, sir. Yes. Give us uh, some, uh, some ideas about methods. Methods for elimination, methods on uh, what you do as far as the proper food to eat. You know, I need some background. Person. That's a very good question. Because when I come before you saying don't, 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 what, 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 should be, right? Yes. This meeting, I, I want to say this, this meeting was impromptu. This young man here is responsible for that. He said, hey, look, he heard me two weeks ago in, in Miami say, man, the people in New York need to hear about you. I said, but Trevor, I won my case in New York 15 years ago, proving to the world that we cure AIDS. How come they haven't heard it? He asked now about the food, which is important. This is a very uh, quick message uh, meeting. I did not come with my entourage that I need to come with, not only to talk about the food, but to show how to prepare it. It is just as delicious. It is, that's right. It is delicious and it is nutritious. So now, what do we begin with? In the morning, 
You want to strengthen your bones and your nerve and your energy. Uplifting sea moss. Mm -hmm. When you wake up in the morning, you drink a big mug of sea moss. Do not sweeten it with sugar. If you put sugar in it, you have just adulterated it. You drink it without the sugar or with maple syrup. When you wake up, you drink your cup of sea moss and you drink two glasses of water and you take off the water. That's all you need. At noontime, you could eat a salad or a fruit. In the evening time, that's when you could eat, you know, your mushrooms, your squash, your quinoa, grain, quinoa, Q-U-I-N-O-A. Quinoa is a grain that comes from South America. You could also buy wild rice, which is natural. The Haitians have a mushroom that grows in Haiti, mm -hmm. called Jean Jean. <laughs> Let me tell you all something. Jean Jean is so good. <laughs> Remember what I said. Anything God made is natural. Anything man made, not so, I will hurt you. Jean Jean is so good that if you take the Jean Jean mushrooms and soak them in some water, in about two hours, the water is black. You drink that water and see how you feel. <laughs> he knows, he may be from Puerto Rico himself. No, I was in Florida. Oh yeah? So, you have mushrooms, you have squash, and you also could buy the the uh, bread, the, the spelt bread. But you see, in saying all this, we could come together and produce our own food. There is an organization by you women in L.A., Muzimai Watkanaka. Muzimai Watkanaka translated is the good woman. They have a hundred million dollar project in which they are asking each and every one of us for one hundred dollars that you will get back in product. But if you give a hundred dollars and every one of us give a hundred dollars and there are forty million of us, do you know how many million that is? <laughs> but they're only asking for one million to give a hundred dollars. That's a hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars? We're going to buy farms in South America and we're going to go to quinoa we're going to buy boats, we're going to build our own holistic village, and we're going to provide ourselves for everything that we need. It only costs $100 that you will receive in increments with product, now that you've given up something for nothing. But if we all give up $100, like we spend, we're going to spend that on Christmas, <laughs> we would have $100 million tomorrow. Remember when I was paid with running for when he asked the Americans for money and they didn't give it to him. And in one weekend, because I'm also partly Haitian, I gave $500. And in one weekend, how much did we collect for our receipt? $10 million. Black America can't do that. No, they can't. Black America does not have that kind of cohesiveness among themselves. Black America has the entrepreneur and they have the mechanic of life. Yes, they do. All the mechanical thing that came in America has come out of the black brain. But when it comes to this unity stuff, the white man makes sure. When Garvey came here, Garvey showed black America what he could do. As a West Indian, he had ships on the ocean in less than four years. Not only that. The white man took an American black man mm. to yeah. turn against Garvey. Right. Oh, yeah. W.E.B. Du Bois. Yeah. 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 So again and again and again it is seen something is wrong. Mm. What is wrong is that our brothers in America, like us, have been bitten by the same snake. Mm. And now we have to stop criticizing each other. We're going to have to find a way to work with each other. And if there's no love, I'm scared because the religion divides us more. You want to hear how divided we are? Just go to Guinea. 
My wife saw it. She said, wait just a minute. These people speak French. <laughs> and they wear African clothes. <laughs> but they worship Arabia. What is wrong? Something is wrong. You see? We wear the African clothes, we speak French, and we worship Arabia. What's left for Africa? Me, I dropped everything. I'm an African 100%. No adulteration. Gorillas just adulterate themselves with the, with the philosophy of another animal. Okay, so why should we? And it is until then that you begin to see how much progress we could make because when I drop the religion, I'm able to cure AIDS now. But nobody in the religions are curing AIDS or any other thing. They're just talking. They just talk, 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 or they ask you to march. Yes. Just march. Next question, you. Yes, I have a multiple question that way. And sometimes, I'm the first one to go with, I'm husband. Now, I work in a metal industry um, where we use a lot of um, zinc and tin. And Metallurgy. Sorry, thank you. And a lot of us are suffering from ulcer and uh, mucus. The alloy. The alloy will hurt you, I know. The reason is we have um, a lot of brothers, white, black, Hispanic, are suffering. And I tried to tell them, you know, about our um, aloe vera. Some are buying it. Aloe vera. Aloe vera. Some are buying it, but some are not. <laughs> and now you came with something else. Um, how can you help us? Let me tell you something about that. About alloys. They deliver a great or large amount of sulfites in the body. Mm -hmm. Sulfites, not sulfites. Sulfites. They will hurt you. They are. But do you know that I found that soybean delivers the same amount of sulfide in the body as does alloy? Anybody eat soybean? <laughs> that stuff is bad. <laughs> Whenever you eat soy, your body has problems digesting and assimilating iron. Sulfide loves to eat up your iron, and you will forever become anemic and, and remain anemic. Oh, don't tell me, I, you eat soy, you are anemic. Uh, man, the sister's right. She said, I thought they said it was good for your hot flashes. Far from the truth. George Washington Carver made plastic. What did he use to make plastic out of? Well, how could you take plastic and then feed me that as my food? <laughs> About the hot flashes. My previous wife used to get them because her ovaries were releasing the ovium but the tubes were clogged. That is the beginning of menopause. But a woman has 240,000 ovums in her ovary. If she only released six of every ovary every year, because they alternate every month, when she releases an ovum from one, it goes to the other following, right? Saying that she only has released in one year from each ovum, 48 ovums. At the ending of 80 years, just 400 and some odd ovums. But she had 40 some odd thousand. But the doctors never tell the sister why she stopped releasing ovums. I know a woman right in the city. You know the man just died who was a community activist? What is his name? Um, no. Sonny Carson. Sonny Carson's sister-in-law was suffering with menopause. She was in menopause nine years. And she had these fibroid tumors. They came out, 
menopause left and baby came. Mm -hmm. And the little girl named Makita. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still seen her period. And she's already menopause nine years. We could do wonders. Not Dr. Sebi. Us, we, black folks. Next question. Th then you, the lady. Dr. Sebi, I used to have hot flashes. I went to this herbalist in um, Fort Lauderdale, and she gave me hormone and blood purifier. And it stopped for a year, and I started taking living bitters capsule <laughs> for colon, and my period is on again. No, the liver, no, no, the bear was what did it. That was what did that stuff. The bear. One more question. I am taking sea moss every morning. That good. With banana, uh, apple. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Bananas are acid. Yeah. 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 And you put something acid in it, you have just adulterated it. <laughs> Eat it by itself. Mm. I'll sweeten it with some maple syrup. Don't put anything else in it. How about honey? <laughs> honey? <laughs> that stuff is deadly. <laughs> One of America's greatest musicians by the name of Eric Dolphin. Mm. Bass clarinet. Yeah, yeah. I met the brother, because I met him on train at the same time. <laughs> this man used to drink two tablespoons of honey every day because at the time in New York in the 50s and the 60s, honey was on the top of the list because the Bible talk about honey. But what the people didn't know, the honey the Bible talk about come from a natural bee. Mm. The bee that you have today is a hybrid animal. That honey is acid, it is sugar. It will give you diabetes. You tell a diabetic to eat that honey, she was going to have to send his sugar way out of whack. He died of a sugar attack in Germany. Mm -hmm. Eric Dolphy died with that honey. Mm -hmm. God did not make that bee. <coughs> the bee that makes the honey that is alkali is a small little fly. You Jamaicans have seen it. <laughs> they make the honey in the trees and in, in the, in the holes yeah. and they go in the ground. Black America doesn't know that. That's why they could sell black America anything because the one thing you and I have is Caribbean. We grew up in the middle of the forest. We understand the forest. Black America understand asphalt. Right. They don't know the forest. <laughs> so when you put something in front of a black American brother and sister, they are handicapped. They don't know. It's not that they couldn't know and they would not like to know, but the environment prevents them from knowing certain things. When we, on the other hand, we know. Like in Jamaica, they have the ikako or the, sh or, or the what, what do they call it, the sugar plum. Um, Coco plum. plum. They call June plum. Yeah. And then they have the other one they call Dawns and Trinidad, the little yellow uh, oh, oh, oh. cherry. Down. Okay. America doesn't know these things. We have thousands of fruit that America doesn't know about. We could defend ourselves in the forest because when I went to Africa, the same thing I saw in the West Indies, I saw in Africa. Actually, look at that. You, you, you know what shining bushes? Yeah. Shining bush, right? It goes between the rocks. It's pretty. Smells good. Mm -hmm. You eat that. That stuff gives you energy immediately. I saw it in Guinea. I saw it all over Zimbabwe. But like I said, I came back disappointed because I found visiting 14 African leaders, 17 different countries. They look at me like I'm stupid. Oh, God. This is delicious, I said. Look at this. Is this how Paul Glucose has traveled? And all these years, Dr. Sebi prides himself as being an African. And now that he's an African, they're looking at him as if though he's less than equitable. I say, man, I'm in trouble. Yes. My question, you mentioned about Frank Clark's wife removing his fibroids. Did you not have been able to remove the fibroids without her having them searched to remove? Only, I don't, only with herbs. I removed 14 fibroid tumors from a woman named Gloria Walker in New Jersey who is a school teacher in East Orange, New Jersey, without a knife. So I know a lot of women here, I'm one of those who read a lot, so 
I know that five are 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 five you know something? Besides being right, you are 100% right. I learned that at 17 and I'm 42. Mm -hmm. she, she knew. <laughs> but she, as a woman, has no place in our society. Mm -hmm. She is a woman. Nobody really wants to listen. You see, she mm -hmm. is a woman. The religions of the world put her way in the back. But yet we came out of her. We had to come through some woman's vagina, right? Well, how in the devil <laughs> I'm going to come out of a woman and suck her breath and all of a sudden she become less than me? Who started that? Islam and Christianity. Why do we continue to embrace that? I learned from my mother that she never listened to my father. And said, because if she had, we'd be in trouble, she said. And she said, so when you marry, you listen to your wife. The advantage you have is this. And I trick you, woman. My mama teach me to trick you, woman. <laughs> my, my, my mama said, agree with her and do as she says. Because if she tell you to do something wrong, well, you could say, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but all the while, we've been in front. Yes, yeah, you fool me, and you men, you all think you're bald. They always jam that down our throat. But what I did, I took the humble place. <laughs> what you want me to do? <laughs> you gotta do so and so, I'll do that. I, but guess what? It's never wrong. It's always right. So we need to listen to a sister like her. But she would never get audience in a religion. I don't care what religion you have. She's a woman. She means nothing. She just happened to be a baby. And I came out of her. So what? That's nothing. I saw that in Nigeria. There's a king in Nigeria named Akande. So his mother took me to visit the king in their own private plane. When I got to George Plateau, the mother came out and did this in front of her son. Mm. <laughs> I said, oh, God, <laughs> I want to know how is this woman going to justify this one when this man came out of her and she bothered to him. Guess what the woman said? Brother, I'm going to let this on you guys, okay? Because this is important. These women, they are slick. They, know, they, they are smart. They know the truth. Guess what the woman said? When I asked her, I said, Mother, can they? Uh, how could Yeli come out of you and you bow into him? Oh, she said, that's easy. You see, you men, you like for your ego to be inflated. <laughs> <laughs> woman know, woman know that when we stand up and claim that we are man, she says, shut up, man. <laughs> You're limited. You came out of me. So how could you be that bad? You see? Women are stupid. But we are the ones that continue to use and to obey the philosophy of Europe. Me, I put my woman in front. My woman is better than me. Of course she is. Uh, yes, ma'am. Three years ago, I had an illustration. I was diagnosed with bipolar. And they put me on a lot of medication, and my body had an adverse effect on it, and I gained 60 pounds. And they kept me in psychiatric ward. That was me. Really? Okay. Oh yes, I was paranoid, schizophrenic. Uh, it was horrible. I couldn't, I, I couldn't sleep. Nothing, nothing worked. And then, um, I, I, I fought against the brain because they kept instilling fear in me, telling me that for the rest of my life I have to take medication for the next 80 years. The doctor specifically told me that I was like 80 years. How, how did you calculate that amount of years? <laughs> so what I've been doing on my own is we like weaning myself off the medication gradually because I've been told that you do it. 
any like fast or anything like that, you can actually um get manic again. Yeah, that's true. In increments, you and do it. Exactly. And I've been looking for a holistic alternative approach, but what I find is that a lot of people claiming to be holistic and having an alternative approach are still very much influenced by the Western philosophy and medicine that they kind of tend to use some herbs, but they still use chemical bases. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I am at a war because they're not they're not seeing me. And, and I always have, I'm always being referred to someone that doesn't, that doesn't know my history, that doesn't know me and comprehend what I represent. And I'm having difficulty because I feel like there's a struggle that I constantly go through as a woman of color and as a woman that is being misunderstood on a, on a daily basis. You not only have been misunderstood by this society, by your own brother and your husband and your mate, because we were led to do that. I just woke up about 30 years ago to see the truth. But before that, I was a macho man too. So now, in response to your question, when there is a nervous condition like I were, I had a very bad nervous condition. I was so bad I want to kill my wife. And yet, 27 years later when I saw the same woman, I was driving on La Brea and Rodeo Road, right on the corner of La, La Brea and Rodeo Road. I saw her. I said, wow, there's Melba. Let me turn back because she's wearing these thick glasses and she's big. Why didn't I feel to kill her then? Why did I turn the automobile around and park by the McDonald's little establishment and come behind her and said, hi, Melba. She looked around, she said, Fred. I said, yes. She said, I've been hearing about you. How you been? I said, I've been okay. But I came to tell you something. Send our son, because she had three babies for me. I said, send Abdul to pick up some medicine for you. Why didn't I feel like killing her then? Can't you see? The food I was eating was undermining my brain like she was bipolar, I was bipolar. I was schizophrenic and paranoid. <coughs> Why am I not that now? Why am I healing now? Because I listen. I'm obedient. There's a man in this, was living in this city. He died just recently, Mr. Rogers. I went to visit Mr. Rogers when he was 94 years of age. Mr. Rogers said, I've been hearing about you and I've been using your iron and I feel good. I want you to talk to me. We spent four hours talking with Mr. Roger. He's from, he, he from St. Vincent. He died just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Mr. Roger said when I was going out the door, he said, Dr. Tibby. I turned back, I said, yes, sir. We talked for about four hours. But in the four hours that we spoke and dialogue, he said, there was something that came from you that I like so very much. And what is that, sir? You are obedient. Do you know that nobody after that point has said that to me but my grandmother? Obedience is the most beautiful thing. To listen. Learn to listen. And then, we've been hearing all kinds of stuff, right? And we don't know how to take out of the maze those things that are good because we've been bombarded. But we have not, we haven't been bombarded with that which is African, isn't it? Not once since they brought us to America have we been given classes or understanding or structures that are African because the African themselves doesn't know that either. They're too busy eating cassava. They don't know either. So where do we begin? Well, I began by going back before the white man came. I knew there was no rice and beans and hearts and cows in Africa. And by removing you from that, you come back and tell me, Dr. Sibyl, my diabetes gone. <laughs> my high blood pressure is gone. But did I tell you that I was impotent? No, but guess what? I'm very here. <laughs> now, how do you do all that? It wasn't because I'm a scientist. I just happened to go into history and find out that you and I didn't eat the garbage we're eating now. We have to stop it. We have got to stop. Question, we're in the back. Uh, I've always tell people about the food that milk. Do I always have a downfall? I just like to come on a little bit. On, on men. <clears throat> well, you see, there again, the society tell us not to drink the milk of our mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember 40 years ago, 1960, 1964, 
Nestle Milk made billions of dollars off of Africa. They send the missionaries, they send the nutritionists and told the African woman, do not feed your child your breast, feed your child this Nestle Milk. So all those African leaders in power now, you know what they were read on mm. and read with mm. <laughs> Nestle Milk. So I go to Africa looking like a fool <laughs> trying to make this man get some sense in his head. When there aren't one African leader that have that, the only men are making some kind of reservation for it, Mugabe. Right. <laughs> but then Mugabe, wait, wait. Mugabe is the man, right? But on the hair, the Minister of Health, Dr. Parinyatwa. <laughs> I said, Dr. Parinyatwa, I come to help. We have the cure for AIDS. Get out of here. <laughs> I said, what? You gonna tell me that I have no use for this in the country that I love so very much? Mugabe may be the man, but remember, when you are a leader or a president, you have no control of your yes. senators and mm. your other people. You don't know what they are doing. So Mugabe is all by himself. So right now, the big notice on TV across the screen is that the lost children of Africa. Africa is dead. While we were talking and giving praises to Africa, the white man was forever giving it some chemicals, mm -hmm. especially the French. The French, the French paralyzed Guinea. Ten percent of the males in Guinea are paralyzed by the French. Milk of an animal is what they gave us. Animals does not let other animals feed their cubs unless they are from the same gene. Mm -hmm. But we so-called intelligent people Homo sapiens, educated professionals, we give our children the milk of a cow. <laughs> but the milk of the woman, which is compatible with us, that nourishes ourselves because it is compatible. Not an animal. How could I be compatible with an animal? <laughs> but all the religions give us milk and give us cheese. And then we blow in our nose. <laughs> our vagina is dripping and so are penis. Our ears are clogged. Our eyes are clogged and dripping sometimes. Because nobody, no one came with the message. So the brother asked the question about the milk, which is very important. Because the milk that we get from our mother's breast threaten our immune system. I was a breastfed child up until what? Four years of age. But when I came to America, I began to eat this stuff and I went into a state that was uncomfortable. But when I got away, here I am again. Never to go back on the garbage. Oh, do I love it? The rice and the beans. <laughs> and the pork chop. And the wieners. And the cheese. And I used to like this, 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 this lamb. You know lamb? Yeah. When you fry lamb and you put it down for about an hour, it gets white, 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 white on top. Lanolin is on top of it. Yes, the religions ask us to eat it because it's good. Brothers, we need help. We need each other's help now. And I hope that tonight, this group that we are here, we would form a family through this man. We could join up, join up as a family. And I would be forced to give you information because you come to me for it. And that's what you should receive from me. Tonight, I'll tell you what you come to. It's only two hours. When I come back the next time, as he promised, that we'll be back in the spring, I will bring my entourage and we will go into the list of foods and show how to prepare it. Because in reality, I don't even eat. And I eat today, I don't eat tomorrow, and when I eat, you know, I know I'm eating something bad. So why eat it? You take this. The woman asks again, what is in it? You know, when you see a bullfighter fighting in the, in the ring, have you ever seen a bullfighter fighting a cow? No. 
They would never put a cow in the, bull, in, in the ring with a bullfighter because you'd kill it. Because the bull closes his eyes before he gets to the Toreador. So he got a chance to step out of the way. But you put a cow in there with it. And her eyes are wide open anyway he turns. <laughs> she asked, what's in it? This package has is a compound of two substances. Only two. And how I thought about this was with the aid of my wife. She said, you always say that oxygen is a cell proliferant. I said, yes. Oxygen is the real food. You could eat the best food in the world. And I hold your nose and your mouth for two minutes, what happens? You're dead. Yeah. Telling us that the cells need what? Oxygen. Oxygen. The more of it you get, the more alive you are. She said, okay. And the next one, which is the substance that electrifies the system and removes inflammation? Iron fluorine. So I went to Africa. I got the Kankansa. I went to Honduras. I got the Guaco. I went to Mexico, I got the lily of the valley, which is nothing but iron. And I got all these iron herbs, and I put them together along with the herb that has what? Oxygen. And if you believe that herbs does not trap oxygen, well, you got another guest coming. When I come back to New York, I'm going to bring the herb, and I'll put it in a glass of water. And as the earth goes down, you will see oxygen coming from the earth. There is another earth that has oxygen. It's the marula. It has so much oxygen that it owns the water. So when you combine these earths, oxygen and iron, you come up with the viento. And when you take it, the first thing you're going to feel is that you're going to sleep like a baby. You're going to have energy. This Venezuelan man came to throw away the trash from the house about two months ago, and I gave him some. I said, take this with you, young man. He came back and met and said, my wife <laughs> loves you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this young man been, been first, de then you. Oh, you first, then the young man, yes. One, one topic I've never heard you address before. I've heard a lot of nutrition from the people on it. It's um, the silver fillings in our mouth. It gives us a very toxic... The what? Well, I didn't talk about that, sure, you're right. But any kind of filling, any kind of alloy, he could tell you, any kind of alloy in your mouth creates static electricity and is also deadly because it has what? Uh, come on. The, the byproduct of... of of the stuff is what? Mercury. No. No, not mercury. Lead. 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 Green. Tartaric acid. It's bad for you. Wait. Yes. One of the things that I heard is that a lot of older people, as well as some younger people, one of the things that the plague is. Um, the black community of uh, prostate cancer? Oh, yes. Oh, most definitely. Jamaica especially. Jamaica has the highest incident of prostate inflammation. So is Guinea. But they're both in Bami, cassava, rice. Rice, that white rice. That white rice tastes good in the mouth. Especially with some gravy on it. <laughs> <laughs> I love my gravy and my rice. I don't eat it now. But I used to love rice, mm. and rice is cyanide, mm. and a lot of sugar. Uh, in fact, I'm coming to you, young man. I went to Russia, you know, in 1970. I went there because I wanted to understand how could this man, Ivan Petrovich Pavlov, control and condition a dog with words. Mm. That wasn't true. You do not condition anyone with words. That's impossible. Who? Mm. That's right. The milk that the dog was drinking every day, that he salivated himself to death, what was in the milk? Glucose, sugar, the same thing in cigarettes. That's why you become addicted to cigarettes. Why? Sugar is in cigarettes. And when you eat sugar, it's worse than cocaine. 
You can't use it. Well, I gotta hide my little piece of cake. <laughs> Just a little piece. Uh, Doctor, take this. I'm not supposed to have much cake. <laughs> Why the little piece? Because the condition. We all are addicts, including me. You understand? I fight to stay away, and I'm doing a fairly little good job now, as I hope, because I'm 70 and I don't have to wear glasses. I'm not weak. So. Something must have been happening with the food that I've been eating and entertaining. It has helped a little. The, the, the brother over there. What you deserve it. You deserve it, brother. I'm glad I found it. Um, my question was to you, the team can bring to the team um, the difference cooking the food and being a natural growth of the No difference. In fact, it could be worse. <coughs> the philosophy is, if I eat something raw, I will get all the enzymes. <coughs> right? right? What are enzymes? <laughs> Wait. The philosophy is, if you eat something raw, you're getting all of the vitamins and the enzymes out of it. That's what they say, right? Well, guess what? When you eat carrots raw, you're eating raw starch. <coughs> Whether you cook it or not, it's, it's, it's poison. But on the other hand, if you get something natural and you eat it raw, you get energy. You cook it, you get energy. You burn it to an ash <laughs> and you grind it to powder, black carbon. You get the same amount of energy because something natural never dies. It just changes form, but the energy is there. So, brother. We drop the philosophy oh. of raw and cooked because all of my iron, my, the iron that I make to reverse sickle cell, the herbs are cooked. And how come they work? Because they are natural. If it's unnatural, it doesn't mind. It doesn't matter if you eat it raw or cooked. Yes, ma'am. Um, and, and then, yes, this young lady. Uh, um, I used to go to the Ultra Herbal Institute when we were in Brooklyn uh, on Fulton. Yes. And um, you used to have a food combining chart and a lot of products. Yes. And I've been looking for you for a long time because I want to get those products in the uh, combining chart. Now that you're in, you know, Honduras, how would I go about doing No, I'm not in Honduras. Oh. I'm so back in the United States. Oh, I'm I never was in Honduras. I only went to Honduras to build a village. Oh, okay. Because my wife and I wanted to build a village <laughs> where black people could go and heal because there are terrible waters there. But the government of Honduras is showing me a little bit of attitude because I made a mistake. I didn't realize how much I was offending the government of Honduras because Honduras is a Spanish country. It isn't like training out of Jamaica. I wish I was living or came or was born in a black country. I was born in a Spanish country. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that black people are loved that much in a black country. And they, I bought a brand new car and they put a gun to my head. I bought another car, they put another gun to my head and they stole both brand new cars. When I come to find out it was the government that was doing it. And then there are people that came and robbed the place. There were people from the government. Mm -hmm. I told my wife, I said, look, just sell this place and get out of this place. But she is reluctant and resistant. She always resisted me. And now she finds herself wanting to leave. Mm -hmm. So the question was, how can, I how can I touch with us? Well, you will, because Trevor Ford is here now. And I'm working with the brother. <coughs> He's my contact here. By the way, those six pieces of paper you have have the contact number in it. That's why I'm passing it out. If you didn't get one, get one. Anyone has the number on it to contact me for the product. We need one to back This is why I brought this. 
I brought this product to sell tonight if you all are interested. Because this product, it would take less than 24 hours. In fact, after you take this thing, I give you one and a half hours. And you're going to be different. You're going to feel the energy. Because it is oxygen and iron, and they assimilate fast. This thing works immediately. When people come to our center in Los Angeles, Satanisha played tricks on folks. She would ask them, have you had the bento? No. She would give them three with a glass of water. In an hour, they run back. They say, what was that you gave me? I want some. I put my life on this. Yes, sir. The cause of AIDS? Not of my opinion. I do not mm. afford anyone my opinion. Mm. Because my opinion may be off base. And I don't want you to be off base. <coughs> I want to come with the truth. The cause of AIDS is the cause of diabetes, is the cause of sickle cell, is the cause of leukemia, is the cause of every disease. Some people are of the opinion that it was made and it was brought about through a chemical. That may very well be true because they are chemicals that would kill you in two minutes or one minute. Just put your, if I take and put you in a cyanide chamber, you know a gas chamber? Mm -hmm. But isn't that cyanide and arsenic? Yeah. Sulfuric acid and cyanide? Yeah. And, and it kills you in two seconds, right? Okay. So if I take another chemical that is less deleterious, then it may kill you in four years, in two years, in one year, breaking down the mucous membrane. But to break down the mucous membrane in the skin, the blood, and the lymphatic system, which makes up the immunological system, it could be food or a chemical. You're welcome. <laughs> My job is to cure it. <laughs> Last question. Uh, the lady, okay, I'm going to have two or three more. Yes. I was thinking, uh, uh, my name is Melba, by the way, and I am overweight, and I'm looking forward to taking this, the medicine, I mean, the, um, the herb. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine, the pharmacist, and she was saying that what she was talking about is called a renin theory, where there's no uh, salt balance, and uh, that we lost two enzymes from the came to, to America, and, um, <laughs> and I was uh, uh, I was thinking about how I feel when uh, people go on TV and they say that this this disease is superior to Af more superior to Africa, and how badly that made me feel that uh, I was singled out for this. And I, I'm really happy that um, that you've given us this information because it makes you feel in almost like inferior when you uh, you're someplace taking something and using something that's not. Um, that everybody else is using, they're not getting sick like you are at the rate. There's a reason why we continue to manifest this high degree of disease. Remember, when it took us away from our mother, they took us away from our breath. The food that was made for us, specifically for us, was no longer in our mouth. You see? You're right. But losing the two enzymes, what enzymes? Uh, Aldosterone or something like that? Sister, <laughs> sister, the body is made up of 102 minerals. Iron, calcium, phosphorus, carbon, and all the rest of the minerals on the planet. All this chemical that she's talking about, the body doesn't know about that. Yes. Well, I, let's ask a question then. Oh, wait, hold, wait, one second. Uh, uh, Usha, where's Usha? Where is uh, Zave? Usha and Zave? Come up here, please. Those are my daughters. Thank you.
We are looking to train brothers. Don't get angry at me here. Huh? But the only person that is the only gender is being trained to carry on a female. Yes, only female. The reason for that is a male doesn't know anything about nurturing. Mm. And that is the primary giving in healing to nurture someone back to health. Well,